Hey guys, so my name is Tumin Chen. Um, I'm a software engineer at Red Hat, and today I'm going to talk briefly about multi tenancy ironic. So, quickly, what is multi tenant ironic? Well, ironic was originally designed for admin only use. Multi tenant ironic simply means we allow non admins to have selective API access to particular nodes. What's the motivation? Well, I work with an initiative called Elastic Secure Infrastructure, or ESI, which is an initiative started by the Massive and Cloud, or MOC. Um, it works on several projects, but one question it was trying to answer was, if you're in an organization with a bare metal cloud, what do you do during periods of inactivity within your bare metal cloud? Well, one answer that they proposed was that multiple organizations actually collaborate together and donate hardware into a single bare metal cloud which has hardware belonging to multiple owners. Um, in that cloud, owners have exclusive use of their nodes, but owners can also choose to allow Alessi to gain temporary access to one of their nodes. So you can imagine if you're a research institution with a bare metal cloud and you share your hardware with other research institutions, you still have exclusive use of your hardware whenever you need it, but during periods of downtime, you can donate uh, use of your hardware to other research institutions. And during moments when maybe you need a little bit more, you might be able to find that hardware from other, other organizations. So when ESI decided to go ahead with this project, um, well, well, we talked to the upstream uh, Ironic dev team about how we might implement this in Ironic. And they were very helpful in uh, helping us come up with a series of implementation steps and writing up a spec. Um, so the implementation is actually pretty straightforward. Um, the first thing we did is we updated nodes to have owner and lessee fields. And actually, Ironic nodes I already had the owner field, but it was purely informational. Next, we exposed owner and lessee fields to policy. And in OpenStack, policy just means it's a set of roles that determines whether a user's API request is going to be accepted or rejected. Um, so by exposing owner and lessee fields to policy, we can add two new, new roles, is node owner and is node lessee, which says, you know, is a person making this API request uh, the owner of this node or the lessee of this node? Uh, policy roles can be chained together. So with those two roles in place, we can now do things like update uh, bare metal node update to allow the API request to go through if the requesting user is an admin or is the owner of the node. Uh, similarly, uh, for bare metal node set power state, we can say that this API request is okay if the user is an admin or the owner of the node or the lessee of this node. Um, by default, uh, in Ironic, uh, the, the default policy roles um, still shuts off API access for non-admins. So um, in order to enable this, you would have to modify your policy file, but that's a very, very straightforward pro uh, process. And really that's most of the implementation. Uh, that's, that's really the bulk of it. Um, there are a few additional details we worked through. Um, one was uh, we discovered that if you want to provision a node using standalone Ironic, um, you need to be able to update the uh, nodes extra and in instance info fields. Um, if you're a lessee, so one way of doing this would be to grant non-admin users the ability to update, um, update the nodes fields. But if you're a lessee, then you probably don't want to grant a lessee the ability to update any arbitrary node field. So we added two additional policy roles uh, for uh, update policy roles specifically for the extra and instance info fields. Uh, another thing we did is we exposed the node owner and lessee for associated bare metal port operations. So now not non admins can view bare metal ports and the uh, bare metal ports associated with their nodes. And depending on the policy, they can also manage them, create or uh, do other things with them. And then we also added node allocation owners. So uh, what this means is if you're a non admin and you create an allocation, then you are now the owner of the allocation and the allocation conductor, when it matches you with an ironic node, will only check uh, ironic nodes that you either own or lease. So with these changes in place, um, we tested this out with MailSmith, the client-side Python library for provisioning ironic nodes. And we use a, a specific policy file, which you can see linked here. And we discovered that it just works for node owners and lessees um, with no other changes needed for MailSmith, which was kind of a validation of our approach. Um, so I'm just going to take a quick step back and see how this um, work fits into the ESI hardware leasing system design. Um, uh, the proposed hardware leasing system um, principally consists of three services. Um, one is a leasing service, which is kind of a new thing uh, for us, which I'll talk about a little bit in a bit. Um, there's a bare metal service, Ironic, and networking service, or Neutron. 
And there's two main workflows going on here. One is the leasing workflow where owners can offer up their nodes into the leasing service. And then lessees can go into the leasing service and see what nodes are available and lease nodes for a period of time. And when the lease begins, then um, the leasing service simply tells Ironic, can you set the, can you set the, um, the nodes uh, lessee to the person leasing this node? And when the lease is over, um, Ironic will unset the lessee and clean the node. The other workflow is the provisioning workflow, where owners and lessees can take the nodes that they own or lease and perform various provisioning actions. They can provision it using Mailsmith. Um, if they have an external provisioning service, they can connect their nodes to that external provisioning service using Neutron. Um, they can power cycle the node, they can perform other actions. Um, one thing I wanna emphasize here is that the leasing workflow and the provisioning workflow are very, very distinct from each other. So if you're interested in, our, in, in the multi-tenant ironic work uh, for provisioning, but you, know, you don't need a complicated leasing workflow, say you either want owners to, to designate lessees themselves or you don't even have any need for lessees. That's totally fine. Um, you, don't need any, you don't need any of that and can still take advantage of multi-tenant ironic. Um, just some quick notes about some of the additional development we did uh, that's, that aren't directly ironic related for this hardware leasing service. Um, one is we added support for the Cisco Nexus switch and the ML2 Ansible networking because that Cisco Nexus switch is what the MOC uses. Um, we also found it useful to add some simplified user commands. And what that really means is that we extended the OpenStack CLI to combine multiple, multiple OpenStack commands together and discovered it's a really simple process to do so. Lastly, we created this really simple leasing service where, as I said, owners can offer up unused nodes for specified time periods, lessees can claim unused nodes, and the, lessees, and the leasing service will take those leases and tell Ironic what to do with them. So what's next? Um, so first of all, we're currently uh, uh, deploying this hardware leasing system into as a, on a trial basis within the MOC, and we're going to um, get some trial users to test it out, and the expectation is that their feedback will drive further development. Uh, another thing we're, uh, we're working on is node attestation with Keylime. So with Keylime, uh, Keylime can talk to a, a, a piece of hardware's uh, TPM module and attest the node, uh, make sure it hasn't been tampered with, which is something that I think a lessee will be very interested in knowing. Um, we also like support for um, Multi, uh, for non-admins to be able to be the node with the volume, um, uh, with Ceph ISCC support in our case because of requirements. Um, in order to do so, uh, we just need to expose node owner lessee um, for associated bare metal volume targets and connectors operations so that if you own or lease a node, then you can uh, create volume targets and connectors for it. Um, after that, uh, we uh, just need to add additional update policies for specific roles. Um, one is updating node capabilities, and the other is updating a node storage interface. Um, this is stuff that, this is code that we've actually already done, we've tested it, it works, and we're just uh, waiting for it to be reviewed. Um, finally, uh, there's uh, something that's a little bit um, uh, a longer term, which is FlockX, um, a bare metal marketplace. So the idea here is if, um, when, when um, uh, you think of ESI, but uh, in, the, in the marketplace model, um, an owner would not only offer up a node, they will also set a price for the use of their nodes. And then the, the lessee will come to the marketplace, see what nodes are available and what, at, at what price, and then actually uh, purchase use of the hardware for whatever time they need. Um, this is an idea of a, of, a, of a couple of BU students. It's a grad, graduate uh, student project at Boston University. And if you're interested in more details, there's a link right there. Um, and if you're interested in further information, um, there's a ESI presentation and a demo um, on this YouTube link. Um, if you're interested in our documentation or our code, we have a Git repository. And if you'd like to talk to us over IRC um, about ESI, then we can be found in Freenode in the MOC channel. And that's my entire talk. Thank you.